Hi everyone, this video covers cell membranes and their structure and function. Uh, basically, it's a summary of how cell membranes allow things to enter and certain things to leave. So cell membranes are actually complex. Um, found throughout the membrane are proteins and other lipids that help the cell perform its functions. So we will cover this in greater detail later. But for now, recall that um, cell membranes are made up of a phospholipid bilayer. So you can see that structure of that phospholipid there. And you can see how it's formed into a bilayer here. You can also see from this picture that there are lots of different types of proteins found in cell membranes. Some of them are glycoproteins. These are proteins that have um, sugar chains attached to them. Um, they serve a certain purpose for the cell. Some of them are transport proteins that allow things to enter and leave the cell. So you can see here, that's essentially acting like a little tunnel for the cell. Um, some of them act as anchors um, and will anchor things like the cytoskeleton. So we see the cytoskeleton here um, on the inside of this membrane, on the inside of the cell. So it's a dynamic, complex uh, structure this this cell membrane and as we go over the next couple of classes we're going to learn about diffusion and osmosis and how things uh, can enter and leave the cell uh, based on the biochemistry of the cell and based on you know this idea of diffusion and osmosis so we're gonna talk about that but I want to take you back to uh, connect to our previous unit which was on biochemistry and specifically we're going to talk about protein structure and function here so if you recall um, some proteins have secondary structures called alpha helices and beta sheets. So you can see some of those structures here. And um, this is a really important component for some of these membrane proteins. So if this is your cell membrane right here, there are certain parts of proteins like these alpha, hel alpha helices or the um, beta sheets here that um, need to be composed of certain amino acids due to their biochemistry. So also recall that some amino acids behave in a nonpolar fashion. So these would be the amino acids that would associate themselves with this internal portion of the membrane. Recall that if this is a membrane made up of phospholipids, that the internal portion here would be hydrophobic. So that would mean that all the amino acids that span that hydrophobic region of the cell membrane would come from this nonpolar category, okay? So we've discussed how changing that primary sequence of amino acids uh, can have results downstream at secondary and tertiary structure. This would be an example of that. If you substitute a nonpolar, uh, what should be a nonpolar amino acid for maybe one of these polar amino acids down here, well then you're in trouble because you potentially lose this structure here because remember, polar amino acids would not want to interact with the internal portion of that membrane, the hydrophobic tails of the phospholipids. Okay, and we can see that in the following slide. So um, again, based on the biochemistry of the membrane, certain portions of it being hydrophilic, that being the polar head of the phospholipids, and certain portions being hydrophobic, the tails of those phospholipids, certain things can go straight through the membrane and certain things cannot go through the membrane. So let's lay down some rules for this. So um, to be able to go through the membrane, you need to be small, not charged. So you need to be nonpolar. So two um, examples of this, Things that are small and nonpolar are these important gases, CO2 and carbon dioxide. Okay, so both of these gases can readily diffuse straight through the membrane. Okay, so we like to get, um, we need to get oxygen inside of our cells. So oxygen can go straight through that membrane by a, pa uh, a, a passive transport, so a, a form of transportation called passive transport. Um, that is because it, you know, oxygen is only two atoms in size, and uh, it is sm so it's small and it's not charged. 
Same thing goes for CO2. And actually, I'm going to switch this arrow for CO2 going out because we actually don't want carbon dioxide in our cells. So CO2 would pass out directly through the membrane to the outside of the cell. So small nonpolar, not charged gases can go directly through the membrane. So can other lipids. So other molecules like estrogen, recall that estrogen is an example of a, um, a steroid hormone. Uh, you know, it's that four fused ring structure. And because they're hydrophobic, they can pass directly through this uh, phospholipid tail section that's hydrophobic. Now, what about some things that cannot uh, pass directly through the membrane? So things like ions that have charges, they cannot go directly through the membrane because of this hydrophobic region. However, some of those proteins that I mentioned before serve as entryways for things that are charged like ions to enter the cell. And the same is true for water. Recall that water is polar, so water has its own channel to enter into and leave the cell in abundant amounts. So water leaves in high volumes through proteins. It cannot go directly through the membrane because it will not pass effectively uh, past those um, nonpolar hydrophobic phospholipid tails. Okay, so that's an introduction to the biochemistry of the membrane and some of the reasoning behind why certain things can and cannot uh, pass directly through the membrane into the cell. We will go into greater detail later on, so we'll add some specifics to this, but this is a good introduction for you, okay? Thanks for listening.